Part of being an effective VA, though, is not just doing things right, it's also about doing the right things. How do we know we're solving the right problem? You know, the only way to true to solve a problem is to know what it is you're trying to solve. Absolutely, Jared, which takes us to our second habit. So our second habit is to define the problem. Only by defining the real problem can we truly solve it. So, Jared, how do we know that we're, we know what the problem is that needs to be solved? <laughs> Heather, have I ever told you the story about the CEO, the BA, and the shredder? <laughs> Jared, that is such a good story. I think you need to tell that story, too. You know, it's one of my favorites. So imagine this. A young business analyst was leaving the office when he found the CEO standing in front of a shredder with a piece of paper in his hand. I can picture it right now, right? Listen to the CEO. This is a very sensitive and important document, and I don't know how this machine works. Can you help me? Certainly, said the BA. Turns on the machine, inserts the paper, and presses the start button. Excellent, said the CEO as the paper disappeared into the shredder. I just need one copy. <laughs> oh, geez, Jared. That was a real career limiting move on the half of the BA. He solved the wrong problem. You know, as business analysts, we need to understand the perspective of all of our stakeholders. We need to talk to them and validate what we know. What I like to do sometimes is I like to say, here's what I think the problem is and get them to repeat the problem back to me. We need to figure out what that real problem is. We need to stop taking orders and we need to provide real value. We need to stop asking, do you want fries with that? <laughs> oh, the BA requirements, fast food drive through window, absolutely. We get those orders and if we just respond to the order as this BA and the story did, we are gonna solve the wrong problem. So. If someone offers a solution before we understand the real problem, the real problem still exists and we have not created any value. We've created more layers or more workarounds or temporary fixes. So let's think about this poor business analyst. How would a highly effective business analyst handle this situation? So we think about the story and the CEO comes up to each one of us as the highly effective business analyst, and he says, hey, um, this is a very sensitive and important document. Can you make this work? Can you stand here in front of the shredder? What would we do? Well, Heather, I would suspect that the highly effective business analyst would start asking questions, right? Stop taking orders and say, what is it you're trying to do? How sensitive and important is, do you really want to shred it? Right? <laughs> yeah, first, first of all, um, well, that's a shredder. Do we want to destroy the document? <laughs> I agree. We need to make sure that we stop and ask those right questions before we move forward with the order that the CEO is giving us in this case. Ken, do you have any other suggestions for how what you would do in that situation? Or Carol? Now, the one I see in this issue that uh a little bit different and that is when stakeholders have conflicting interests and trying to resolve it you know this says that jumping to a solution too quickly is inappropriate but in practice i see the getting at the quote real problem often is the stakeholders don't have a common problem they're trying to solve different problems but their lack of communication forced them to jump on a project that looked like it was momentum and something related to what they were asking for. That is a great point, um, Ken, absolutely. So in that case, we have many different problems. So what's the most important problem might become an exercise that we need to prioritize and we need to get the entire group together to agree on what the real problem is in that case. For sure. So one thing that I do that is helpful is that I like to frame the problem statement. What is the issue? What's the problem? Who is being impacted or affected by that? Who are the stakeholders who have some sort of skin in the game in that? And how are they impacted? What is it that's going on that's so bad about that for them? And then 
what are the benefits or what would a successful solution look like? Not what is the solution, but what would a successful solution look like? In the case of this situation, we might have a problem statement that looks like um, this. A company needs to send a copy of this document to the regulators while keeping one copy for their record. The company could face a $2 million penalty if the document is not received by the regulators. Creating a duplicate copy mitigates the risk of the original not being received. We know so much more information than just the CEO standing in front of a machine saying, do I know how to work that? So Heather, I actually like to take this problem definition and I put it on all of my meeting invites, my meeting notes, so that everyone knows what the finish line looks like, right? So we can drive towards solving this problem. Yeah, so in, in the scenario that Ken was mentioning where we've got multiple stakeholders with different problems, when once we gain agreement on what problem we're going to focus on, having this statement visible helps contain scope, helps us in our conversations and reminds us of what it is we're really working at as opposed to the 10 other problems that exist as well. So good, good point, Jared. So the next habit we have is smart requirements. Requirements must be 